It's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. This week we talk about Nintendo NX rumors, WWE Battleground, and give our thoughts on the first War and Smackdown of the new era. What's up guys, welcome to episode 23 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me as always is Finn Steele. Hello. How you doing? Very good, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Yeah, this is what he takes. Yeah, this is <laughs> take number seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. So we've had a few technical issues and a bit of line fluffing, mm-hmm. and finally we are here. We have got it right, I think. Now. I think so. I think this is the one. This is it. Real yeah. now. What are you blaming? Life. Are you blaming the heat still? Uh, yes, still the heat. I blame this new mic stand, which is confusing everything. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, you've got the mic a bit closer this week, so I do. Um, mainly because the balance has been off. Mm-hmm. And we're just trying to, we're still trying to get it right. We're still learning. We're still, we're still new, I think. Yes, we're still learning. Even though this is episode 23, we're still new. Yeah, pretty much. We still have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's, I think that's a, a fair assessment. Yeah. I like that meme of the dog with the laptop. <laughs> we're exactly the same as that. Yeah, we are that. We're, just, we we're are, just two dogs on a laptop. We are the human version of that dog. Pretty much. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll figure it out properly eventually, I'm sure of it. We'll get it. Yeah, I think so. So it's still too hot for you then? Still too hot. Um, I'm a huge nerd who likes cold and likes being indoors all the time. I also like being cold. Yeah. Today we have the window open. We do. Uh, in Podcast HQ. So uh, hopefully we won't have any sort of outside noise coming in. Yes. Yeah, so no ruining shots. our podcast. Yeah. Um, so we'll be a bit cooler today, I think, compared to last week when we were just sweating buckets. I'm always cool. Wink. Okay. <laughs> Are you cool? I am. Okay. I'm coolest. You threw me off then. Well, I wasn't expecting you to say that. Uh, we don't have a script or anything, but I don't know. You just uh, you're so quick with the quips. I am. I'm the quip master. <laughs> <laughs> Finn, I sent you a text message earlier on today. You did regarding some devastating world news. Some disturbing news. Yes. Now we don't usually discuss world news on the Sunny and Finn show, but For good reason. We're, we're going to add world news to our repertoire Why if. Not? It's important enough for us to discuss. Yes, this is very important. The most important news. Now, you've just looked at the volume there on your microphone. Are you still concerned? No, it's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fixing it in both. It's fine. You can work with it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, because for a change, I'm louder than you. Yeah, I know. It's Usually, back- it's the other way around. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. back to the world news. Okay. So, um, it's about everybody's favorite hero next door, mm-hmm. Fireman Sam. Yes, the hero this world needs. Yes. Wow. Or is he the hero this world needs? Yes, well... So, if you don't know who Fireman Sam is, if you're from a different part of the world and you listen to the Sonny and Finn show, Fireman Sam is a British fireman. Yes, it's like Postman Pat, except it's a fireman named Wait, Sam. Wait, you've just used Postman Pat, like the world knows what that is. People never want to know what Postman Pat is, surely. So someone's listening to, in Dubai, <laughs> they're not going to know what Postman Pat is. Google it, are not they? Okay. Postman Pat, Postman Pat. Fireman Sam Pat. is a children's television show, and it's like just like Pat. Postman Pat is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Both very popular. Both icons when Finn and myself were growing up. Yes. Fireman Sam has come under fire. Yes. Oh, uh, no pun intended. I didn't even mean it. It was unintentional. Very clever. Thank you. <laughs> but it was unintentionally clever. Yeah. Okay. Um, in a scene from Fireman Sam, a recent episode of Fireman Sam, Fireman Sam's friend Elvis is Elvis. bringing, uh, walks into a room, like the rec room, like the works recreational break room. Yes. And he's carrying a tray of hot beverages. Mm, he is. I think they're drinking coffee. Makes sense. Keep them alert. Yeah, just in case any fire. any pesky fires up here, mm-hmm. got to they've got to be ready for the fire. They've yes. got to be ready to get out there. They've got to be awake and alert. Ready for disaster. So coffee. We think it's coffee. We've not obviously had it confirmed. Not confirmed, but uh, I could tweet saying. Fireman Sam and ask him if it was coffee. Yeah, he could do that. He has an official Twitter account. He does at Fireman Sam. Oh wow. Okay. I think it's at Fireman Sam something. We need to follow him. We'll find out. Yeah. And we'll tweet him. <laughs> um, but upon entering the room, um, Elvis slips and spills drinks everywhere. Careless. But he doesn't just slip on anything. He slips on what appears to be a page from the Quran. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. How does this happen? What? Uh, what? Well, no, I, I what? don't. <laughs> I just don't understand how these things happen. Yeah. That was my first question when he texted me that. I was like, literally just said, what? Yeah. <laughs> so he slips on it what appears to be the Quran yeah. and the world 
or at least this country has gone has gone batshit over it. Yeah, it's so strange. People have gone crazy. So um, obviously, there's a lot of madness going on in the world at the minute, and the last thing that yeah. we need is Fime and Sam adding to this chaos by being a little bit racist, adding fuel to the fire. Uh huh. Now we don't know if it's. Have you read, have you done any reading into this today? Um, only briefly. You didn't waste a lot of time reading into it. I, I spent most know. of my working morning, like <laughs> sort of looking at this. Yeah. Now we don't know if you know if it was intentional. Yeah, it I certainly know. looks intentional. When I saw a comparison picture of, oh yeah, I looked into this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, saw, I think I saw the same picture. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, definitely a page from it. A picture of the Quran, a yeah. page from the Quran, and the still from the the video clip from Fireman Sam, and it certainly looks like it is intentional. Yeah. Apparently, it's supposed to just be a page of gibberish, mm. quote unquote. Maybe they just to give them benefit of that doubt. Maybe they just went on Google and thought. Yeah, that's a page with page of nonsense, and just didn't recognise that it was a page from whatever. I so, don't know. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't doubt know, it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's like I don't know. I think maybe one of the writers or the designers or whatever is trying to be a little bit trying to be funny. Yeah, I think it's like an animation studio in China or something like that. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's not red because it is computer animated. Like in our yeah, day, yeah. it was sort of done with little models. Yeah, yeah. Um, this to me isn't the biggest issue. No. Workplace safety has to be taken into consideration here. Yeah, absolutely. You can't just leave a page of the Quran just lying so around. Don't don't stand doors. on pages of religious books. No. Don't do that anyway. But <laughs> yeah. don't leave religious books lying around. Yeah. Or at least pages of religious books. So careless. So not only is Feynman Sam uh, under fire for a little bit of racism, he's also probably going to get sued. By yeah. Elvis, who was bringing in the tea. Well, it's a blame. There's a claim, of course, um, because you can't just leave things lying around. You can't. It's, it's, it's dangerous. Same in any working environment. We learn this at work. We have to feel like this bullshit, bloody training crap. Of course. So, I mean, you have to feel sorry for poor Elvis because yeah. you know, I, you know, his poor coffee is gone because he spilt coffee everywhere. Yeah. Um, coffee, he's coffee. you know he's probably hurt. Probably, but in hospital with third degree burns. He's been. Embroiled in a in a, a racist, yeah, yeah, you know, argument, and he also looks a fool for falling over as well. He does. So Feynman Sam is in big trouble, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's not good for him. It's not. Poor, poor Elvis. Poor not Elvis. Sam. I mean, I think the other guys who were in the rec room got burnt as well, including Sam. Oh dear. Sam maybe deserved it for being reckless and leaving stuff all over the place, but maybe. It's a tough time to be Feynman Sam right now. It is. It's a tough time for Feynman everywhere. Agreed. Feynman, make sure your sh- make sure your rec rooms are tidy. Avoid this blunder. Yeah, seriously. Like Feynman Sam. <laughs> Clean up your Quran when you've finished <laughs> reading it. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to read the Quran in the rec room, please don't tear pages out of it. Yeah. And leave it lying around. <laughs> Clean up after yourself. Of course, we're only making light of this situation because it's it's a ridiculous thing to, for people to be getting outraged it's about. It's so dumb. Why is this news? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it shouldn't be news. It's just a silly thing. Of course, we are not, you know, <laughs> we're, we're against not, people who read the Quran in any way. No, and it isn't some sort of religious statement. We just thought it was dumb. Yeah, we just think it's <laughs> a, a dumb thing to happen. Yeah. Um, but still, don't leave pages of anything lying anywhere because like Finn said, where there's a blame, there is a claim. Absolutely. We are the Sonny and Finn Show. We are a wrestling and video game podcast that posts every single Saturday across oh, yeah. all podcast networks. We are that, yeah. Let's talk video games. Okay. What have you been playing this week? Um, not a whole lot, really. Uh, I played through Inside. As did I. Uh, on Xbox One. Um, honestly, I didn't love it. It was fine. It just, I, it, I don't know, it bored me. It's too artsy for my taste. Okay. It's like... I'm sure there's some like deep bullshit meaning behind it, all all it, but I just I just didn't get it. I didn't get the vibes. Okay, well personally I loved it. I did genuinely love it. I yeah. love the feel of it. I love the the art style. Yeah, we got definitely in the majority. I think most people liked it. Yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, fair enough. You want your games explained from the back? I do. Just tell me what's happened. There what's was literally on. no explanation of the controls, no explanation of st- story. It throws you straight in there yeah. from the from the title screen and you just like go 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 do this adventure. Go yeah. do this four hour game. Uh, like, but I did. I loved it. Um, you know, I think you know the story sort of speaks for itself towards the end of the game. Uh, I won't spoil it because people 
are, you know, are still to play it. Obviously, yeah, it's fairly sure. new. Yeah, yeah. Um, graphically, it's very, it looks very good. I like all the animations and oh, stuff. Oh, it's lovely, yeah. But, uh, easy 1000G as well. Oh, yeah, so easy. Um, but, yeah, I just I just didn't get it. I liked it at the start. It was like, well, it's mystery. I thought, oh, it's going to be explained. It's going to be great. And then I finished the game and it just, like, it just ended. I was mm. like, oh. Did you do both <laughs> endings? Uh, yeah, I got the other ending. It's equally baffling and nonsensical. I know, but it, it, it was just... <laughs> It was a, it was a good uh, it's a really good game I I liked it I mean obviously I can't knock your opinion for not liking it it's up to yourself but um I I really did enjoy it I love the art I love the mystery um I loved the craziness towards the end because yeah. it was crazy and it was very funny um it's very bizarre yeah You've been playing anything else um more Overwatch as always um, the new patch hit consoles which is a lot of fun because Diva's got changed and I love Diva 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's probably one of my favorite characters to play now. Which is awesome. Uh, she was one of my favourites to play anyway. Yeah, she's great. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. How okay. about you? You're not going to throw numbers at me from Overwatch? Um, no. <laughs> I'm going to try and avoid that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's she plays a lot better now. Uh, the like special uh, damage blocking thing is much more effective. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I love it. Okay. Love um, it. Like you, I played Inside. Mm-hmm. But I haven't really been dedicating my time to anything else. Okay. Um, There's a lot of wrestling been filling up my time. Well, yeah, there, there is so that. Wrestling. I mean, wrestling has pretty much taken over my life these last few days, but <laughs> yeah. uh, um, including in video game form, I've been I set up a universe mode on WWE 2K16. Oh yeah. Now, last week I was playing 2K15, which I still intend to complete the showcase on, but I've set myself up a little universe mode cool. uh, for Raw and SmackDown. Done a little bit of a draft, and I'm gonna have a bit of fun with that. I think. Awesome. Um, I've been playing a random football game called right. Active Soccer 2DX on Xbox One. Of course. Um, me and my friend saw it on the store and we were like, should we just should we just get it and play it for a laugh? <laughs> it's like with uh, Five Star Wrestling. It is. It is sort of like that. <laughs> it's like a top-down football game in the mo- in the model of Sensible Soccer and oh, the yeah. likes. Even uh, it is. And to be honest, I actually really like it. It isn't a great game by any stretch, but it's fun and I must have put a few hours in and it's going to be an easy thousand gamer score also. Awesome. I'm loving a bit of Xbox One at the minute, I have to be honest. Cool. Uh, um, honestly, I'll barely touch my Xbox One. I played inside. Uh, other than that, last time I played it was for um, Quantum Break. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. I want to, I want to go back and play with the way we play, play all the games on there. Mm. Um, I want to play the Halo games again. Got the Halo uh, collection. Do you have five as well? Uh, I don't have five. No. Okay. I've just re downloaded five to my console because I intend to play it. Um, I bet the story wasn't that good. So yeah. I've kind of been put off about that. I'm playing 2K16 on xbox because oh, yeah. my i've got 2k16 on both um the ps4 version is for streaming cool and the xbox one is for fun cool okay uh i'll probably download it on xbox one when it's free with this game sure games are called thing which we'll get to yeah fair enough uh, but yeah. um but that's pretty much it i've just um downloaded marvel ultimate alliance 2 for playstation 4 so i intend to play that cool. because there's no good marvel games anywhere <laughs> pretty much well um, spider-man 2 is good Okay, well, I mean recently. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 aside, you can't, we can't just pin all of our Marvel hopes on <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Yeah. There's a new Spider-Man coming from Insomniac, that might be good. That would be awesome, yeah. But now, because the, the, they're out of bed with Activision now. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Thank God. So I think sort of the remasters of Ultimate Alliance, and I'm sure there'll be a couple of more uh, to come, like Probably. sort of remasters of old Marvel games. Um, because oh. Marvel are branching out now. They're going to use developers that specialise in the sort of games that they mm. would want. Good, which, is, good. which is really, which is a, a fantastic move. It really is, yeah. Instead of so giving awesome. it to Activision to chuck a crappy movie tie-in out there, mm. you know, um, just, I mean, Ultimate Alliance is fantastic. That's what I don't yeah, understand. I like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, I was like, what was the Wolverine game? Like X-Men Origins? Wolverine? Yeah, that was, see, that was a movie tie-in, but, yeah, but it was a good. very <laughs> rare, good movie very tie-in. Very rare, yeah. Yeah. We've got a bit of gaming news this week. Okay. Um, we'll bit. start with... Some Nintendo NX rumors Ooh. that look pretty concrete. Yeah, pretty much. Tell me what you know about the Nintendo NX. Uh, Nintendo NX. Uh. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> my, my voice like literally cracked. I, I talk uh, all day for a living, yeah, so yeah, it's like I, I come to this podcast on a Wednesday and I, my voice is like. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I have to like drink like ton of water before I do it. Yeah, I'm not one to want to mock uh, people's inability to speak, but um, yeah, uh, so the Nintendo NX. Um, it's apparently a portable console, um, which you can plug into the TV. Uh, so we've got some detachable controllers you can t- take out the side, apparently. Um, yeah. But apparently it's like on par with the PS4 and Xbox One-ish. Might be like slightly less powered because it's portable. Um, it's an interesting one. I mean, mm. it reads like it's going to be a hybrid. 
Yeah, that, uh, that, the rumours going into it as well that it might be a hybrid. So that's been confirmed. Well, I dig that though. Yeah, it's, I, awesome. I, I, it, it's awesome that you can play your NX on the move, mm, like, whether you're on the bus or whatever you're doing, taking it where, wherever you are on a plane, any what sort of in transport mm-hmm. on a plane in Spain, in anyway. space, whatever. <laughs> and then you can come home after your hard days NX playing whenever wherever you've been, <laughs> and then you can plug it into your TV. Yeah, but it's gonna be like a dock. So you know, like the dock that the, oh, I guess the Wii U controller has. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we said like an HDMI port coming into it. I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Apparently, it's gonna be cartridges as well. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's like the 3DS and stuff use cartridges. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, it makes sense on this end though. Cause Nintendo's always been had like this handheld part of it. It's always done. I don't know, probably slightly better than the consoles had a bit recently. Oh, um, without question. Yeah. I mean, there's no. There's no way that the Wii U touches anywhere near the 3DS. Yeah, that's probably true. 3DS just it rules, it dominates the handheld market. Yeah. 3DS is awesome. I love 3DS. Um, but yeah, so it makes sense. Um, it makes sense. So I guess it's going to be like an upgrade to both the Wii U and uh, 3DS. Yeah. But they're putting all their eggs in one basket, essentially. Are you excited? I am. I'm always excited for new consoles and stuff. Will you be day wanting it? Depends on the price. Possibly, and depends on what games obviously come at launch. Should we do some prize predictions? Well, I know we have no concrete sort of confirmed anything hmm. at the minute, but these rumours look pretty concrete. Pretty much, yeah. I'm going to take a stab in the dark that it's going to be 250. Okay. It's a good estimate. I'm not doing any research, I promise. Um, okay, I'm going to say, say 250. That's a, really good, that's a good estimate. I'll say close to 300. Close to 300. Mm, that's next. Mm, I don't know. Actually, no, that's probably completely wrong. I'll say 225. 225? You know yeah. as low as that? I think so, because okay. it's... Basically, mm. I've hit the nail on the head with 250. I, th- I feel like I've hit, hit the, the most like, concrete <laughs> sort of uh, price range. Um, yeah. I'm but, excited for it. I mean, uh, I, you know, I want more solid news to come out. Yeah, me too. Um, I probably will day one it. And I imagine you probably will as well. I probably will, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. But I want to know more. Me too. And this is some concrete information from Nintendo. We to be honest, I, all I'm going to play is Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario Kart, Because yeah. like, it's guaranteed to be Mario Kart on it, right? Yeah. And Zelda. I want these Zelda. Zelda looks pretty good. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's great. It's going to be a launch title. I mean, they've already said it's going to be a launch title. I think so, yeah, yeah. Are you going to get Just Dance as well? That was announced at the Ubisoft oh, of course, E3 yeah. conference. Got to get Just Dance. Classic. Yeah, we'll do. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll film us playing Just Dance around your house. Yeah, yeah. What that'd do you be, mean? That'd be a video. I'll get tons of views. That'd be that. I really want to make a break into like internet fame. Yeah, for <laughs> the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just be, Look how uncoordinated these, <laughs> these two idiots are. <laughs> yeah. Why are two grown men <laughs> with beards playing Just Dance? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yay. We did a podcast a couple of weeks back. A few weeks back now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Saying, let's make Sonic great again. Mm-hmm. I think Sega listened to the podcast. They did. They heard us. They they, they heard, heard our dulcet tones. <laughs> our very uh, our sexy voices. Sexy, sexy. Talking about their little blue mascot who has lost his way in recent years. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're hitting us with some new games. Yes. Tell us about them. Two whole new two new hot up. Um so we've got Sonic Mania, which is a old school two D um sprite based classic Sonic game. Looks amazing. It has remastered levels from old games, it has brand new levels. How can you remaster these games? I don't these know. Levels? I have no idea. But it, it looks, looks awesome. I mean looks- <laughs> I saw the video for it, I'm 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 hyped for it. Me too. It looks amazing. I've been saying this to do this since like Mega Man Nine did it. I was like, I love Mega Man Nine, it got me into Mega Man. And that man, they should do something like this with Sonic. That'd be awesome. Um, and now it's finally happening. It looks amazing. It looks great. It yeah. lo- I mean, it looks. It, it's exactly what Sonic needs. It really, is. It's it, made. It's been made by the same guy who did the uh, Sonic CD uh, port to new consoles. Yeah. Um, who is awesome. I pretty much. I think he made like a Sonic fan game, and Sega saw it and was like, "Man, this guy's really good at making Sonic games. We should hire him." Mm-hmm. Uh, so they did, and uh, he's making this new game. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited. Two, 2017, that's coming out. Yes, I think spring 2017. It's a long time to wait, but I hope the, I hope it's going to be worth it. Yeah, we said that it needed to go back to basics, and it would appear that they are. Yeah, 
Thank goodness. Um, and it's that's that's just exactly what Sonic needed right now. Absolutely. 100%. Make everybody love Sonic again with this, and then hit them with something else. Uh, yes. Which they Speaking are doing. Of, yes. Uh, so we've got a CG trailer for a brand new uh, Sonic game. Um, I had no name. No name. Um, people calling it Sonic Hedgehog 2017. Um, hopefully, it'd be better than Sonic 2006. Yeah. Um, mm. But it showed. Yeah, it showed. That's not its official name, though, is it? That's just what no, we I think call it's just it. people are calling it. Yeah, yeah. It showed uh, new Sonic running through the world. It looked like some sort of disaster was happening. Uh, they said like typical American style trailer. Uh, Every hero needs a hand, or something like that. And uh, it showed yeah. showed classic Sonic from from like Sonic Generations uh, coming. Exactly the same. Yeah, they're great. The same Sonic from Sonic Generations and Sonic that we have known from the terrible games that we've <laughs> sort of seen recently. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it looks like it might might be a Sonic, another Sonic Generations type thing. They've come out and said it's not Sonic Generations two, um, so yeah, which not is quite, fine. Which but... is fine, but yeah, make it that style of game. I think it will. Be. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's no be. doubt that it will be. I think they've heard people sort of saying that Sonic Generations was fantastic, which it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they can blend the amazing 3D action levels that they are 100 percent capable of, yep, and also the 2D side scrolling semi 3D platform levels that they mastered with Sonic Generations, mm-hmm. then they're onto another winner without question. For sure. I think it'd be Sonic Generations but with all new levels instead of like new like old Yeah, levels. remastered old levels. Yeah. Yeah. Um or reimagined old levels, I think is probably the correct term. Yeah. Probably. So I think it's gonna be a brand new game instead of here's what we can do uh yeah. with this sort of engine. Yeah. Here's what we are now gonna do. We're gonna move it forward. Good. Brilliant Great idea. It's just, <laughs> just a brilliant idea from Sega. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've done what we wanted them to do. Absolutely. It's uh, a step in the right direction. Um, they, they've Please get it right. Done. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please make it good. Please spend time making it good. Don't rush it out. Yeah. Um, Did you see our clips from the Sonic 20, 25th like, party? Mm. It, was, it was bad. It was true. Yeah. <laughs> Technical problems, just awkward, awkward <laughs> moments. There's, just, there's always a stumbling block where, where there's some good yeah. Sonic, there's some very bad at the same time. Yeah, oh, it's so bad. Poor guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the games, the games came out, that came out a bit good, so. So we're going to get two new Sonic games in 2017. Yes. Hooray. Hopefully both are good. Hopefully. I want both to be great. Me too. Fingers crossed. Yes. Mario gets done right every single time. Pretty much, yeah. There's no missteps with Mario. Yeah. I hope they start to do Sonic right. They it seems like they're listening. Seems like it. Fingers crossed. WWE 2K17 is a, it's a few months away. Hooray. And starting August the 2nd, in partnership with IGN, mm-hmm. WWE and 2K Games will be revealing the roster. Cool. It's going to be done over five weeks. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty standard. They seem to do it every single year. Yep, pretty much. I used to get super hypes for roster reveals. Uh, now they're not too much because it's kind of obvious who we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I agree. But, um, uh, they've announced that the McMahon family are going to be in the game. Makes sense. Uh, I'm hyped for 2K17. We play a ton of 2K16. So much. Um, We stream it, you know, all the time. (laughs) We play it all the time. Um, So I'm I'm stoked for something new to be coming along. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Uh, This is the most excited I've been for a WWE game in years. I think it's because of what we do with the game now. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, Yeah, so I'm super excited. Same here. And it's cool that people asked us, you know, if we were going to be streaming 2K17 on release date, which of course we will. Yep. Hopefully we'll get it early from the place that we ordered it from and uh, we'll be able to bring it to you even a bit earlier. Hopefully. So look out for that. So yeah, the roster reveal starts August the 5th. We'll talk about it every week until the roster is finally fully revealed. Yep, yeah. And we'll talk about WWE 2K17 in a bit more depth. Absolutely. Hype. Hype. I don't get hype. Uh, stay hype. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> the Xbox Probably games day. with gold have been revealed for August 2016. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's pretty strong. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, we've got I can't pronounce it, so you might Warriors Aroshi Aroshi Warriors Aroshi Three Ultimate Warriors Aroshi Three Ultimate. That's enough. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sounds like a U game. Yeah, it's pretty much me game. And WWE 2K16 are the Xbox One offerings this month coming. Very good. Which is good, which is strong. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, tell me about Warriors Hiroshi 3 Ultimate. Uh, so it's basically a Dynasty Warriors game. Um, if you played Dynasty Warriors before, you know what it's about. Um, 
It's, like it's, Home Rule Warriors for the Wii U, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, it's, it's Dynasty Warriors uh, crossover with uh, Samurai Warriors into one big, massive, uh, weird, confusing game, which is very good um, if you like the kind of thing. Well, I uh, like High Rule Warriors. Will I like this game? Probably. It's, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. All, okay. all, all Warriors games are pretty much the same thing. Okay. Uh, you against a horde of enemies, square, square, bunch, square, square, square triangle, um, okay. and, and you'll win. Or, or in X, this X, case, X, 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 Y. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll download it. It's free. It's free, yeah. Give it a try. You might like it. Some, I guess a lot of hate online because it's like every year it's the same. Well, not every year, but it's like every game, every new game to do. It's pretty much the same kind of thing. Well, people are buying but, them. Yeah, people, there's people like me who are big fans of this kind of thing who love it every every time. So why not? Give it a try. Fair enough. And of course, WWE 2K16, which I think is a big deal. People are yeah, still buying it. the game, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to get it free on Xbox One is, is cool. It gets people hyped for 2K17. Of course. Hype. Hope. Makes sense. And um, of course, on Xbox One, you can play backwards compatible Xbox 360 games. Mm-hmm. And this month we get Spelunky. Cool. Uh, which I, I think is a, a, a <laughs> it's 2D. A good, is it it's a 2D, of, um, uh, bloody, what do they call it? Roguelike. Okay. Um, it's so hard. Okay. I, normally I like hard games, but for me, Spelunky is just over the edge of being too hard to the point I just hate it and I can't play it. <laughs> They seem okay, to be doing this, it. like bringing, giving us hard games to play. Like Super Meat Boy is bloody hard. I love Super Meat Boy though. Yeah, Super I do. It's great. awesome. Like, I, I was playing it. I've got no achievements for it. I've mean, like, been playing it for ages. Hmm. It's quite hard. But there's like this fine line of being difficult and being too difficult. And like Splunky's on one side and Super Meat Boy's on the other. Okay. For me. <laughs> That's where the line is. Where it ends and starts. And this month for the Xbox 360, we get the excellent Beyond Good and Evil HD. Mm, so good. Good game. Well worth playing. So good. So I'm going to download that as well. Cool. I'm going to play through it. I've already got the achievements in it. Yay me. You what? <laughs> I bought it when it came out. I got all the achievements. Yeah, you. Because I'm so good at games. You are good at games. Your <laughs> Xbox gamer score is insane. Like, yeah. I will never reach that level. I'm like an uh, average player. And I, I had an Xbox 360 when it first came out in 2005. Yeah. I got- and I was playing Dead or Alive with the bouncing boobies and Boobles. Project Gotham Racing 3. Nice. Which I love even Great to game. this day. Great game. I love it. They 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 won't ever make another one because I think that, that studio doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I think they're right now, sadly. Oh, which sucks because I love those games. Me too. Superb. But yeah, um, I got pretty addicted to as you get logging achievements. I was that guy who always like bought or rented like the easy games to get mm-hmm. the points on just to get their <laughs> points up. But this, this is why I play games now. I play games to like. Cause I've literally been playing um, a load of Xbox One this week because I want to boost my. I'm, I'm approaching thirty thousand game scores, which, like I said, is fairly average. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've been. Trying 100% FIFA 16, cool. and I'm very close, but I have played for, I mean, because Xbox One tells you how long you've been playing the game for. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've put well over five days into FIFA 16. Nice. So which I, I, which is like 130-something hours. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. It's about the same amount of time I spent playing Skyrim. <laughs> and I don't doubt it's going to be exactly the same for FIFA 17 when that comes out. I'll Probably. Put the exact same amount of time in. Yeah. But I've, I've nearly, um, I've nearly 100... Uh, sorry, a thousand G'd it. Cool. So, and I, I you know, a thousand G'd it, a thousand G'd, thousand G'd inside, it. and I'm going to do that Active Soccer 2DX, and there's, you know, I, I I get more satisfaction unlocking achievements on the Xbox than I do unlocking trophies on PlayStation. Hmm. Oh, about the same. Um, So, yeah, I jumped from 360 to PS4, pretty much, so I'm mostly trophy-based, trying to get my trophy platinums up. Um, But yeah, I used to be super into unlocking achievements. And, Is uh, my trophy count higher than your trophy count? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to check. Okay. Not that it matters anyway. No. It's not a competition. <laughs> You're just better at games than I am. <laughs> the PlayStation Plus games for August have been announced. Okay. It's it is. Good. It's not great. Oh. Okay. So we get Tricky Towers and Rebel Galaxy and Ultratron on PlayStation 4. I've heard of none of those. <laughs> PS3 hell? gets Yakuza 5. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so awesome. I'm going to download that. I haven't bought that yet. I'll and Retrograde, that. which is supposed to be very good. Cool. Oh, it's a good, good month for PS3 then. Yeah, PS4 so, and Vita get shortchanged here. Yeah. You get Patapon 3 for the Vita. Pat- and, oh, that's right. and Ultratron. I don't know what that is. No, I don't know what that is either. <laughs> Patapon's good. Um, people are going crazy in the comments, as they always do on the PlayStation <laughs> blog. Yeah. Um, you could survive though, that's awesome. Man. I was going to buy that anyway, because I needed to get through Yakuza 4 still. Yeah. And uh, Yakuza 0 when that comes out. Uh, Yakuza 0 has got a release date. Oh, it does? January 2017. Sweet. It's Neil birthday. Yay. I think it's January 24th. But don't quote me on that. I'm not... I saw it literally before you came over. All right. Um, I'm, I'm excited for that. I mean, yeah. I think I said it on the first episode of our podcast. 
That's that cool. I was ready for Yakuza Zero to come to the West. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's gonna have. It's not gonna be um, English speaking. It's gonna be English subtitles. Yeah, yeah. English Japanese subtitles. speaking, which I'm fine with. I don't care. I just yeah, want to play the game. Me too. Um, I want to play it without the pain of using a guide to translate it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But I'm super excited for it. I played. Uh, I've got. I have the Yakuza Zero demo oh, yeah. on my PlayStation 4 that I downloaded from the Japanese store. Awesome. And I love it. I love the way it looks. I love the way it plays. Uh, I love the fighting. I just can't wait to play it so I can understand it. Yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, I'll play through 4 and 5 before that comes out. So I can... Uh, yeah, that would be good. So yeah, that's a cool one for the PS3 this month. Yeah, very cool. It's good to see that people are still paying attention to the PlayStation 3. Yeah. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure it's time to stop playing your PlayStation 3. <laughs> No, never. A um, little bit of Batman Telltale news. Okay. The game launches next week. Yay. Uh, and I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm day wanting it. And I, you, you, you will get to hear me gushing over it on next week's podcast, I'm sure. There's a Batman action figure over your shoulder. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a Dark Knight Returns Batman and Superman ah. collected. Very nice. That's my... It's one of my favourite Batman stories. Cool. And the animated movie is also very good. And the Batman vs. Superman movie is loosely based on that story. Oh, right. Interesting. So there you go. Interesting. Um, I'm a Mark. What can I say? <laughs> There's a Batman Hush um, graphic novel over there that, I've currently, yeah. that I'm currently reading. Oh, right. Awesome. Which is excellent. Cool. Um, so this is... It's going to be like... It's like some multiplayer aspect announced for this game. Interesting. I'm not really sure what it is. I don't really understand it. But it's like a multiple choice thing, right? Multiple people can try and make the choice with you. Oh. I'm not sure how it's going to work. I've read into it slightly, but I don't get it. It's just the first time it's ever been done in a Telltale Games game. Yeah, interesting. It could be good for like streamers and stuff. You have like people come into your game and try and vote on what you want to do. It says here, and I'm reading this on GameSpot. This seems like the ideal setup for streamers or oh, even yeah. Twitch player style <laughs> events. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't care for it. I just want to play through the story. Yes. Yeah, Apparently, it has <laughs> multiple choices. You can pick which Batman you get to be, what style Batman you get to be. So whether you get to be angry Batman or whether you you know Batman who makes harsh decisions and stuff like that. Or uh, I'm going to play through it with the Batman that I know. Okay. The Batman that you know I think it should be. Cool. But I'm excited for it. I'll probably play it multiple times to be honest. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sure you will. If I like <laughs> it, I'm going to get it on Xbox because I'm. Xbox Mad achievement crazy. At the you can go get a trip. These and if I like it, I'm going to get it on PlayStation Four as well. Cool. Because why not? Why not? Yeah, exactly. All right, that's it for gaming this week. Um, we've got so much wrestling stuff to go through. <laughs> so much. Like this. Busy, busy honestly, busy. like I've been up at. I've been getting up at half five oh, the last three mornings, right? Because <laughs> um, I wanted to watch Battleground spoiler free. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have to be honest. I feel better for waking up early. Good. These last few days, I feel like I have more time to rise from the dead in the morning <laughs> so I watched Battleground Monday morning spoiler free I watched Raw Monday Tuesday morning spoiler free and I watched Smackdown spoiler free this morning excellent and I feel way more satisfied than I have recently with my wrestling viewing yeah that's good um, I got a big spoiler spoiler for me before I watched War which we'll get into that I'll text you about um, yeah that was annoying and I hate that Dude, I this is why <laughs> the internet sucks it does I was just trying to get to like the page where I watched War um by playing the Sky Sports because I'm not I'm legal and all that <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah literally the first tab I had opened was just like here's a picture of what happened said, oh god damn it <laughs> yeah uh, let's talk Battleground okay so this is the last pay-per-view um, before the brand extension really come into effect mm-hmm. and I thought it was a great show like a really good, yeah. good wrestling show it's like the first pay-per-view that I've really enjoyed I mean there's a couple of missteps but there always is yeah um but yeah, let's t- talk us through the results of Battleground and we'll talk about the matches as we go along. Okay, yeah, I really like Battle- Battleground draw. Um, yeah. So, starting off with the free show, um, got made up predictions during the stream of who would win. Uh, so, I added it onto our book list. Um, cool. So, it was Free Zango versus the Usos. Oos! Oos. When I say Oos, you say Over You Super Kick. Oh, uh, yeah. Oos! Over You Super Kick. There we go. From the stream. Yeah, from the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an okay match. It was fine. I like Brizango. Um I didn't watch it, to be honest. I didn't watch it, the pre-show. Okay. It was fine. Um, Brizango got actually got a pretty good reaction. Got getting cheered. Got cheered when they won. And uh, yeah, so Brizango won that, which I predicted. So that's one point to me. Uh, no points to me. I had the Usos. You did, yes. Um, after that, we get to the actual show. There's only the one match on the pre-show this time. Good. And the first match of the night was uh, Charlotte and Dana 
versus Shasta Banks and the Mystery Point partner. Ooh. Who's going to be? We during last week's podcast we said it's going to be Bailey. Um, then during the stream we started to doubt ourselves. You said it might be Nikki Bella. Thankfully, thank Christ, it was Bailey. I was so happy when her music. Yeah, came. I was so happy as well. Oh I, I, had a, I, had a, I literally had an ear to ear smile when yes, Bailey's. Uh, I, was, I was lying in bed, half five in the morning, thinking. <laughs> If this is anybody but Bailey, I'm probably just going to go back to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was Bailey. Unfortunately, it was a one-time deal for now. Yeah, for now. But uh, so, so good to see Bailey on the main show. And she fit right in. She got a fantastic yeah. reaction. Yeah, so huge. She Everyone looked great. Uh, the match itself was good as well. It's very good. Um, Sasha got the deciding... Did she tap Charlotte out? Oh, uh, she... yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte tapped out to the uh, bank statement. Yeah. But it was uh, a good match. Good way to start the pay-per-view. Get good. the crowd hyped. Um, get the crowd in a good mood because they get to see the person they've been wanting for ages. Yes. If it was anybody but Bailey, the crowd would have turned on the match straight away, <laughs> instantly. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if it was Nikki, uh, although people I'm sure would have been happy to see her, yeah. they would have turned on the match instantly. Yeah. All the marks like us would have <laughs> turned on it. Um, but yeah, seventy Bailey. I love Bailey. Uh, please marry me. And I can't <laughs> wait for her to um, make her way onto the main roster. Yeah. Uh, I read that the next batch of NXT call-ups is going to be in October. Interesting. Okay. So um, I, I mean, Jesus Christ, it's... she has to be called up to the main roster then. Surely. Surely Although I don't see where she's going to go after she loses to Asuka at Takeover Brooklyn Two. Yeah, that's a good point. Which I assume will happen. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, after that match, um, we had the New Day. New Day versus the Whites. Baby. Baby. Uh, so yeah, Bray, um, Rowan, and um, what's Raw. his face? Von Strowman. Um, so, oh yeah, last match by the way. Um, I said that. I would say, oh, we both said uh, Shasha and Bailey would win. We both right, of course. Of course, of course they won. Um, they were never going to lose. No. <laughs> what kind of debut for Bailey with that? Been, but it was <laughs> yeah. lost. It's kind of lost straight away. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so we both said knew they would win this one. Uh, also, last week's podcast we said it would be for the titles. Uh, we were wrong. It's that not... changed. It changed because it was definitely for the titles. It was. All right. Okay. Because they they advertised it as the championships bef- that it was for the titles before yeah. the brand split. And of course, the uh, Bray and Eric Rowan were drafted to SmackDown. Braun mm-hmm. Strowman was drafted to Raw. So I think, based on that, they decided to change it because, of course, yeah, it would the Wyatt's won, yes. which means that two of them would have took the belts to SmackDown, and uh, Braun Strowman with no belt would have been on Raw. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was a really good match. Uh, I thought. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, all all good. Uh, I think it was made sense for the Wyatt's to win. Give them a push now they're going on to their separate ways. Yeah, of course. And I think it's uh, it's good for Bray. I mean, he needed to... Uh, he mm, needs he needed good. a rivalry win. Yeah. Because he very rarely gets them. He builds these rivalries up, uh, makes everyone look fantastic in the build-up to them, and then loses <laughs> yeah. when it comes to it. Yeah. Uh, so it was good to see Bray. He seems to be changing his gimmick. Um, yeah, still fairly. the same creepy hillbilly outback <laughs> sort of uh, character, but... Um, I don't know, he's dropped a bit of weight and he's, I don't know, he seems to be dressing a bit different and acting a bit different, acting yeah. a bit more casual, which I like. Yeah, it is good. Um, so the Whites win. Yes. End of feud. Whites win. And Xavier Woods looked very good in this match, I thought. Looks so good. He's been the standout for me recently in the New Day. Yeah, me too. I think he's been excellent. He needs to wrestle more. Uh, might work great in the ring. Mm. Excellent. Very underrated, I feel. Me too. Um, I like the part where he almost went down on his knees to like, like give himself up to Bray Wyatt. Yeah. So cool. Very good. So after that, we had the uh, US title match. Uh, Rusev versus Zack Ryder. Woo, 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 etc. First misstep of the night for me, this. Uh, yeah. So you said Zack Ryder would win for some reason. <laughs> well, I thought they might switch the titles. Yeah. And so I'm wrong in both counts here. That makes sense. And uh, yeah, I said Rusev would win. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a match that happened. It was fine. It wasn't terrible, but it just kind of happened. Yeah. Fine. I mean, it was... Uh, me. Well done for putting your phone on silent. Thank you, thank you. God's sake, shut up, phone. Silence. Who's texting you? I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know other people. God, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, probably O2. Yep. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <you> know, <too. laughs> um, but yeah, average match. Nothing major really happened. Literally nothing to report. Rusev won. Yeah. The United States Championship remains on Raw. Yeah, Lana was there. She was very pretty. Yeah. She always does. She was wearing some like <laughs> weird... Like yeah. white wedding dress type attire. Yeah, it's very strange. And, and like a tiara. tiara. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Make she was the highlight of that match. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so after that. Oh, wait. Um, were you about to say what I was about to say? I don't know. 
Uh, Mojo. Uh, oh yeah, of course. I was. Yeah. Rusev was... attacked Zack Ryder after the match. Yeah. Mojo came, comes running down with the terrible hype bros music. Yeah. He got a bit of a reaction. Yeah, it was not much. He didn't. He just shouted crazily at Rusev. It was like yeah. just shouting in his face. Rusev was, looked like he was just thinking, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, he was just like, uh, yeah, no. I'm why, is, why is this going on? Why <laughs> yeah. am I being shouted at by it? Cheers, kids. <laughs> a bit of background noise. <laughs> that's what we get for having the window open. Yeah. Wanted to be a bit colder this week, but uh, <laughs> that's what we get for having the window open. Damn kids in the Pokemons goes. Yeah. How dare they? <laughs> Um, Damn you kids talking loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Mojo Wiley came out. Um, JBL called him Mojo Wiley. Thanks, JBL. Good job. Oh. How do you still have a job? Um, but yeah, that was the thing that happened. So Hyper is going to come back. Confirmed. Yep, um, confirmed. Confirmed. Well, well he was wearing his... Uh, I'm just going to close the window. I'm going to walk yeah, over to like, <laughs> the window and uh, close it while we are recording our podcast and the children are talking loudly. Oh, crap. The noise you hear was me closing the window and the blinds going crazy. Yeah. We're not going to edit that out because not we lazy. are... Wink. <laughs> we, are, we are reels. Yeah. We are, we are a reels podcast. Yeah. Things, things happen. <laughs> they do. Life happens. Life it goes is. on whilst the podcast is being recorded. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's three points to me and one point to you so far. Um, after that, this is not the first time. This is unprecedented. I know. It's like I might have to win this one. Um, so then, you have, you have probably the match of the night by far. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn oh man this was so good so good probably the match of the year um, match on, of the year so far you're calling it uh, at least on uh, WWE's main uh, programming yes definitely it was outstanding yes the uh, story wise was excellent the wrestling was fantastic um, there's one was it a boss was it not I don't know uh, but when Sami like springboarded off the ropes yeah. landed, landed we went in his head. We went in his well, shoulder. It was a botch. It was hard to. It was hard to watch. It, yeah, mean, it really away. was. <laughs> I looked away and my eyes. They recovered oh. from it like instantly. It was just a fantastic match. Great yeah. wrestling. Great storytelling. Yeah, it's such a good job of working into the match as well. Like uh, Owens going after his shoulder after he yeah. injured it. It was so, so good. It was uh, sort of like it was like their matches from the Indies. Yeah, and it was just it was when obviously Sammy was El Generico and uh, Kevin Owens was Kevin Steen, mm-hmm. and um, it's like their PWG matches. Yeah. Uh, and it probably was just, better. it was excellent. So, um, yeah, that 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 is probably the match of the year so far, in my opinion. Um, it's up there with Sami Zayn versus, it's definitely the main roster match of oh, the yeah. year so far. Over there with Sami Zayn, that can well, I agree. Yeah. Um, Sami Zayn, very good wrestler. Um, also, the ending was excellent when he, Luba kicked him once and I caught him. It's like, looked in his eyes, like, no, I'm ending this, I'll put him back. Yeah. Another one. So good. Other yes. Sammy. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, so as with this one, you said Owens would win. I said uh, Sammy Zayn would win. I was right again. Four did I really say Owens would win? Yeah, he did. Right. It's either four points to me, one point to Sammy. Wow, I am, I am losing big time here. You are. Um, so after that, we have another women's match. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Natalia. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy this, to be honest. I don't think it was... I think it was a, a very slow, um, mm. plodding, nothing match. Yeah, it, it didn't... It wasn't as good as uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey's match. Why can't Becky pick wins up on these big shows? I just don't, I don't understand. Know. She's so good. And I understand. I mean, you said Natalia would win. Did I say Natalia would win as well? Uh, yeah, we both did. Yeah. I think we both did from a from a perspective of she's the heel and they want to keep her going as the heel and make it look like she means business. So yeah, that make it look strong. She's, yeah, make Natalia look strong. And, you know, Natalia won. It was a it was it was OK. I mean, Natalia wins. And that's it. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like these matches should be better. But they're both excellent wrestlers. For some reason, they can't. I know. This is not no, clicking. The chemistry isn't there. Yeah, I agree. It's, that's it. The chemistry isn't there. It's weird. But, it is. Uh, yeah. I hope it doesn't carry on. I mean, I know. Uh, I mean, and we'll talk about SmackDown later on. But they had another match on SmackDown, which I felt the same about. Yeah. Um, I just want this feud to be end to be over now. Yeah, I want to be one to pick up better things. Um, but yeah, so Red Dragon will win. Both right. So it's point to both of us. Uh, that's five two to me. Uh, after that is the Intercontinental title match. Uh, the the Miz versus Darren Young. Uh, what the hell was this match about? It was odd. <laughs> it didn't even end. That's the thing. I just don't no. get it. It just... Like, Bob Backlund was there with his shirt torn and his <laughs> braces on. After yeah. Marie, He went ape shit after Maurice slapped him. Yeah, it was very odd. So, no, um, The Miz didn't win. Darren Young didn't win. But the it, match ended and... According to WWE.com, it was a double disqualification. Drug. Stupid <laughs> match. Yeah. Um, 
But Der- I guess Darren Young didn't lose, so I guess that yeah. is the takeaway from that. Miz keeps the IEC title on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. He locked um, the he locked the Miz into the uh, um, crossways chicken wing. That's the one crossways chicken wing at the end of the match. So Miz was tapping out. So I guess Darren, Lo- Lo- Darren Young looks pretty strong at the end of it. I guess kind of. But it was a stupid end to the match. It was it was it was, it was BS. Uh, and I wasn't happy about it. I thought it was stupid, and I just it was it was. It was pointless. They may as well have had it on the pre-show. Pointless. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Nobody gets a point because it was done. <laughs> it didn't end. Uh, we both had... I think I had Darren Young to win. Uh, yeah. Yeah, both had Darren Young to win, yeah. And uh, both wrong. Kind of. mm. So, after that, we have uh, John Cena and Enzo and Cass versus the club. Um, what I want to say about this mm-hmm. is how outstanding Enzo was on the mic oh, before yeah. the match. He was a stand out in this match, for sure. Um, I mean, he's just, right now, Enzo and Cass just can't be touched. They're on absolute fire. So good, yeah. Like, sure. they are, the, you know, two of the biggest fan favourites on the roster mm-hmm. on Raw, you know, across Raw and SmackDown. Definitely, yeah. Uh, and they were just excellent in this match, uh, uh, you know, pre-match. Yeah, pre-match and enjoy the match. It was all good. Outstanding, um, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Enzo's great. Um, a lot of the part during the match where it was like Enzo and in the ring with both, like, both club members. Yeah. Um, and he's just like, well, here we go. He's going like, to come yeah. at me, bro, <laughs> kind of thing. It's really it, good. You know what? This match was much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought there were some really great spots. There was a couple of scripted spots in there, mm-hmm. um, you know, where sort of everyone sort of has their moment in the ring doing their finisher or whatever or their signature move. Yeah. Um, but it was great. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a fun. It was a fun match, and I think that's what um, what we can really take away from it is that it was fun. Um, didn't plod along, didn't drag, still told the story as it was supposed to be told, mm-hmm. and it was fun. It was good. Yeah, I liked it. And that's what wrestling's supposed to be, fun and entertaining, and it was both. It was. I, I agree. Um, Tina ended up winning with their super AA up the top rope to AJ Styles. Um, kind of wish there was someone else other than AJ Styles who's lost a match, but whatever. That's yeah. Fine. Um, no, it was a good match. Uh, we both had the club for winning this one. Uh, both wrong, so. Yeah, it was an interesting one, really. I'm surprised. I was a little bit surprised. My John Cena prediction turning heel, by the way, did not come in surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's anyway. never going to now. So uh, well, that's not. Cena as a face forever. Seem, seem, seem so. Yeah, we'll give him to the end, give him to the end of the year, just in case. But yeah, that's not going to happen, mate. It's not. Is it? I'm telling yeah. you now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was the one opportunity I thought. Yeah, I agree. But uh, oh well, never mind. Never mind. But it was a good match, a really good match. Um, I don't think it really matters that AJ took the pin. No, but it didn't. It just, I mean, if Cena and AJ was the were the main two in that feud. Um, if it's going to end that feud, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Because um, both are on SmackDown, so I don't know if they're going to carry it on or not. I think they are. We'll see. I mean, I think next week's SmackDown is going to tell us more than this week's SmackDown did, but yeah. we'll get to that. But yeah, great match. For sure. Uh, so after that, we had the highlight reel, the Chris Jericho, the special guest... Uh, Randy Orton. Fine segment. Yeah. I but don't like Randy Orton as a face. I never have. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. He's terrible as a face. But he's not likable. He's not. He's not a likable character. It's he's a... not a likable person. He's a smug. Yeah. Every, you know, everybody knows he doesn't like people. Egomaniac. Yeah. Pe- pe- people know he's an arsehole in real life. Just Yeah. yeah. And he's going <laughs> to turn heel eventually anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's been off for nine months or whatever. He's going to come back smiling and all that nonsense for now. Yeah. But... He's gonna have to be the heel eventually. I did think this went a bit too long. Um, could have given the main event more time, but yeah, it was fine. I liked the part where you mentioned uh, Lesnar's uh, drug thing. He's yep. like, uh, no, and of course we'll talk about Viperville, which is terrible, a terrible name. Yep, awful, <laughs> but, awful, awful. But he said like, no enhancement needed. Oh, yeah. And like, Jericho oh, said, yeah. I think you're gonna pay for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Randy so, yeah. was like, yeah, I think I probably am. <laughs> yeah, and I think he probably is. He probably is. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it was fine. It was good. Um, good to see Randy Orton back. Um, did the RKO as I knew he would. Out of nowhere. And it is what it is. It, they introduced Randy Orton back into the mix. And that's yeah. that. But it was fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, to be honest, they, the um, they could have just had a match. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, well. Never. Um, so after that, it was the main events. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns for the WWE title. Great match. Very good match, yes. Very good match. Was it overshadowed a little bit by Roman Reigns coming back? I think so. Yeah, maybe. Because obviously no one, Roman Reigns hasn't been seen on TV because of his suspension for the wellness policy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I think people 
wanted to boo him out of the building. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know if it took away from the match a little, uh, but I thought it was great. Three ma- three guys with really great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. It was a super good match. Uh, everyone looked great, even Reigns. Um, yeah, it's just lots of good awesome spots. I like the part where um, uh, Seth and Dean powerbombed Roman to the table. Yeah. It's like a nod to us saying like, yeah, we know what you want, we know what you want, we know this is what you want. Here you go. Yeah. We're like, cheers, lads. <laughs> Roman <laughs> gets a lot of crap, but he isn't bad in the ring. No, he, 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 he's, he's bad fine. on the mic. Bad on the mic. He's not bad in the ring at all. No, he's Because good. he always seems to deliver, I mean, the last few main events with him in have been excellent. Yeah, yeah. Including this one. Yeah, this match with AJ Styles was so good. Um, yeah. Yeah, no complaints for Reigns. Um, good stuff. Took the pin fall as predicted. Yep, yep. So uh, Seth ended up, ooh, nope, Dean ended up winning uh, clean over uh, Reigns. Uh, it's the right decision, I think. Because Ambrose, otherwise Ambrose would look to kind of like a like, transitional champion. Um, kind of. Yes, no, I agree. Because yeah. if, if had he have lost, especially to Reigns, mm, yeah. it would have been like, you're just keeping the title warm until Reigns comes back. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But um, they're carrying on with Dean going forward, which I think is the right choice for now. Absolutely. Um, I like Dean a lot. He looks really good in this match, well. Uh, he looks really days. good in every match. I mean, I've got he no is. problem with Ambrose at all. I think he's an excellent worker. Yeah, he's great. Um, you know, uh, obviously what happened on Raw the next night um, is, you know, what we said was going to happen. But So it's good that Dean Ambrose is taking the title to SmackDown. Uh, the SmackDown roster. I mean, what was interesting, Roman Reigns sort of skulked off after the match. He um, took the pin four and just drifted away. Yeah, pretty much. Silently. Then the SmackDown roster came down and <laughs> the Usos must have done something wrong here because they lost to Breeze Angle on the pre-show then oh, they yeah. came out and had to lift Dean Ambrose up <laughs> at the end. Yeah. Screw you, Roman. We're, we're Dean guys now. <laughs> yeah, so it's an interesting one. I don't know if you saw this. Um, I saw a picture on Facebook yesterday. Um, one of the wrestling pages that I follow. I think it was the Spotlight. Oh, yeah. Um, during last week's SmackDown, when um, they had both the SmackDown roster and the Raw roster backstage, you know, like when they were sitting backstage and during mm-hmm. the match, during the main event. Yeah. Um, like one of the Usos was sniffing Becky Lynch's hair. Oh, really? <laughs> Weird. And like apparently WWE, fit, like someone had caught it on a screenshot. Yeah. Like, so, so one of the Usos, I'm not sure which one it was was sniffing Becky Lynch's hair while Becky wasn't sort of paying attention. <laughs> and apparently WWE officials aren't happy about it. That's so maybe... It's probably just a joke that they just think, oh, it'd be funny if we sniffed her hair. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's probably nothing, but yeah. I don't know. Um, who knows? But yeah. the, the Usos must have done something wrong because now they're Dean guys and not Roman guys. <laughs> yeah. We're lifting Dean up. Brand loyalty. Yeah, yeah Smackdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah Smackdown. Um, but yeah. Great pay-per-view though, I thought. Bar Very a couple nice, of missteps, it? I thought it was a really good show. Out of 10, what'd you give it? I give it an 8, I think. It's mostly for like Owens and Sami Zayn being phenomenal. Uh, Seven for me. Okay. Only because Natalia and the two mid tier title matches weren't great. Yeah, yeah, you probably won't. But the rest uh, of it, really good. Seven out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably right. Um, that's so, for our, our, our grand total. Um, as yeah, I said Seth would win that match. Uh, you said there'd be some sort of uh, screwy win, double winner finish. Um, but uh, nope, Ambridge won, so we both lost a point there. We didn't lose a point, but we neither of us gained a point. I'm uh, tripping over all my words. Um, but it, the grand total at the end is uh, we were five points and it with two points. So I get a, I get a win a, there. A poor showing for me predictions-wise on this pay-per-view, I think. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> so it means our grand total of points up to Sunday with five and me with four. You're Catch. catching me. I'm catching you. You are getting there. I am. Until... I need to step my predictions game up. Yeah. Well, I lose, I lose it in a minute, but we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay. So... Moving on to Raw the next night. Mm-hmm. Um, the start of the new era. Yes. Officially. Officially. New era of the new area. Area. Um, and I have to be honest, this was the first Raw show in a long, long time that I've thought was really outstanding wrestling television. It was very, very good, yes. I agree. Um, Three hours that didn't drag on mm-hmm. and it just got... It right. It's like they finally figured out the formula to fill three hours of wrestling. Yeah, seriously. And it made me think that SmackDown was too short when I watched that on on <laughs> Tuesday, yeah, which is of. weird because I thought Raw's always too long. Three hours is too much. Two hours is enough. Yeah. But now I don't think that. I think three hours is perfect for Raw, providing if they can keep it up. Yeah. They do this sort of thing every single week. Definitely. Yeah. Um. But I thought it was excellent. Um. Have you? 
got the raw results there? Uh, I don't actually. Don't find them. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. I'll find them. Okay. But I thought it was excellent. So raw started basically with the the whole roster on the on the top of the ramp mm-hmm. and Mick Foley and Stephanie in the ring. Yes. Oh, it's a new uh, presentation, a new stage, a new logo, and everything. Yeah, and I uh, don't hate the raw logo now. No, it goes with the like presentation and everything. It, it, yeah, it's, it's a new vibe. I love new vibe. It's good. Yeah, vibe, the whole yeah. presentation <laughs> felt different. Yeah. Like um, really so we got the commentary at the top of the ramp now, which I like. Yep, that's good. And it feels to me like they're going to. Um, they're like they're trying to go with the NXT sort of formula, hmm. so like they'd have a match, they cut to the commentary, you know, stood up facing the the hard camera, yep, uh, and talking about stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, so I like the new presentation, uh, new opening, new music, mm-hmm. um, new logo. The raw the set is still pretty much the same, which is fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, it probably costs a shit ton of money to change everything um, but it, it's different enough where it you can note it it's noticeable oh yeah for sure so um, they obviously needed to address the fact that they didn't have a championship on Raw yeah and they did so at the beginning of Raw uh, with Stephanie announcing or Mick Foley announcing rather mm. that um, they would indeed have a championship for Raw going forward yes and it's Which- going to be called Mm-hmm. The WWE Universal Championship. Uh, what the hell is that? <laughs> Universal it sounds a bit crappy to me. Oh, it's so bad. I'm, I'm worried about what the belt itself is going to look like. Yeah. We'll see. Why we'll just call it WWE World Championship and have a WWE SmackDown Championship? Yeah. And one blue, one red, one. Red one. Yeah. That's, all, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> that's, ex- ex- that's all you need, exactly. Yeah. Make a new bullshit um, tile. It's fine. I mean, uh, I'll grow to like it, I'm sure. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. So what they were going to do, they were going to have um, two fatal four-way matches to determine who was going to face Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the championship. Yep. Which Makes is sense. fine. Um, so the first one mm-hmm. was... In fact, I can't remember. It was Finn Balor. Yep. United States champion Rusev, Cesaro and Kevin Owens. Yep. Sounds right. They did the smart thing by splitting... Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn up in this yes, match. Yes, very smart, yeah. And I think they're going to try and avoid... <laughs> yeah. And the second one was going to be Roman Reigns, Jericho, Sami Zayn and Sheamus. Mm-hmm. So two fatal four-way matches. The winners of the two would fight in the main event of Raw that night and then that person would go on to face Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the championship. Yeah. Um, I, to be honest, I, I loved both of them. I loved, you know, I loved all of Raw this week. Yeah, it was But the first Fatal 4-Way match was excellent. It was, yeah. Uh, Finn, Balor, yeah Finn Balor, victorious yeah. over Rusev, Cesaro, and Kevin Owens. It's just an excellent match. Yeah, it's really, really good. A really good wrestling match. Really good, yeah. Made Finn Balor excellent. Uh, to get to the point. And uh, yeah, just, just a great match. Great Fatal four, 4-Way four match. And it didn't make the other wrestlers look weak either in the match. No, no. Like I thought Owens, Cesaro and Rusev all looked great. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the takeaways from this for me was uh, I feel that Rusev and Cesaro can have a great program together. Yeah, yeah. Two very physical styles. That'd be great. Um, and I think they can have a really good program for the United States Championship. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, Kevin Owens, I'm not sure where he goes from here at the minute. Mm. Um, I'm sure we'll see going forward. I mean, obviously now that the program with him and Sammy is finished. Um, Hopefully. So, I mean... Owens could definitely go for the Universal Championship at some point. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, maybe now they could enter into a triple threat for the US title. Who knows? Maybe. Whatever. Um, but that, to be honest, I mean, I don't even know if Cesaro and Owens um, and Rusev are even going to be in a program. I just that's, I just think that could happen. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so that was the first match. Squash matches have made a return to Raw. Yay. Um, <laughs> um, the debuting Nia Jax... Mm-hmm. Squashed Britt Baker. Britt Baker. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It was it was, it was a, a a squash match in its truest form. Yeah, I mean, I I I quite like squash matches. It makes like a like strong monster heels look really good. Yeah, um, and it made Nia Jax look a monster. She hit yeah. hard. Yeah, it's great. Um, Not sold on the entrance or the music still. Yeah, the music's a bit crap. And she's a new finisher. The leg drop is terrible. Stupid. The thing is, she started to um, use the power bomb on NXT, and now yeah, she, makes... they've brought her to the main roster, and she's using the Hogan leg drop again. Yeah, we went power bomb. Power bomb is good. Leg drop's done. Yeah, leg drop's done. Power bomb is great. Yes, but uh, yeah, other than that, it was a good squash match. Yeah, it didn't last long, but it was yeah, fine. it was fine. 
Um, the set, then we had the second Fatal 4-Way match, mm-hmm. uh, which Roman Reigns won. He beat Jericho, Sami Zayn, and Sheamus yep. in another excellent Fatal 4-Way match. It's very good, yeah. Um, a bit disappointed that Roman won, uh, but although it made sense uh, later. I, to uh, be honest, I was a little bit surprised because I didn't know how they were going to do it. Yeah, I was surprised as well, yeah. Um, but fine. No, it's good. Um, not a good match, as you said. And uh, yeah, it makes sense that Roman won. Did nothing, again, did nothing to hurt anybody. No, yeah. It, tell you what's good about this. What I what I like about this new era is that it's it's like I said. I I mean I said to you didn't I last week that it was going to be a reset yeah. after Battleground, and they're they're making people relevant again. Yeah. So Seamus in this you know case of point here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's done nothing of any worth recently. No, it wasn't you know, background. Been shoved into the background, done nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know it made Seamus feel like a. You know, yeah. a, a big player again. It made sense for him to be there as well. He's like former champion. And yeah, it's good. It, makes, it brings it back to the forefront. Yeah, it does. And um, I think, I mean, I'm intrigued to see what, because obviously this week's episode of Raw was all about this. It was all yeah. about who's going to be competing for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam. Next week, I think we'll see storylines and feuds start to be built, um, you know, with the other guys who aren't going to be in that main event. Yeah. Um, and sense. I'm fine with that. And I For think sure. it's going to bring guys who have been in the background to the forefront more and we're going to get to see more of them because they'll be spotlighted on one show per week and not get lost in the shuffle on crappy mm-hmm. matches on, you know, SmackDown, yeah. which was the B show, which is now an A show alongside Raw. Hopefully. Fine. Um, so Roman Reigns advances to the main event to fight Finn Balor. He does. Neville returns. Yay. With a beard. Yes. Everyone's got beards nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> Literally everyone. Roman Reigns came back with a big, big full beard. Yeah. Um, Neville's got one now. Seth Rollins, but yeah, Beard City. And he um, took on, which was interesting to me, um, he was announced as Raw's Mr. Irrelevant, oh, yeah. Curtis Axel, which apparently is reference to the person who gets picked last in the draft in American sports is called Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. I didn't know this was a thing. Uh, I don't like it. I think it's... It's dumb. I think it's insulting. It is, I'm <laughs> sure. And I think it sort of demeans... Like they 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 called somebody they they named an NFL person I think from the NFL draft who was this year's Mister Irrelevant. Mm-hmm. This is a professional athlete. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So to call oh, him Mister Irrelevant is maybe a little bit demeaning. It's a bit harsh, yeah. But you know, whatever. They're going to carry this forward with Curtis Axel. I'm sure he's going to get called it every week mm, until Curtis eventually Axel. they get bored of it. Yeah. Um, Neville was always going to win. Yep. Pulled out all of his spots. Mm-hmm. Um, I did sort of cringe a little bit every time he landed hard on his fucks. He has just come back from a shattered ankle. Yeah. Ow. Um, uh, but he I never, never looked great. He looks fine, yeah. Uh, he looks almost pissed off or something. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because maybe it's just a new beard makes him look more angry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe he'll turn in this future. Who knows? But uh, he looked great. Uh, yeah, one with the red arrow, yep. which is what everyone wants to see. Yep. Very pretty. It was fine. Um, then we move on to what was, without question, match of the night. Mm-hmm. Sasha Banks taking on Charlotte for Charlotte's WWE Women's Championship. Yes. Fantastic oh match. Oh my God, what a match. Holy gosh, Tom. Um, so Superb. Yeah, it made sense when this match happened because obviously Sasha tapped out uh, Charlotte. Yep. Made her tap out. Um, and yeah, phenomenal match. I think this will do for women's wrestling on the main show what... Uh, Shasta versus Bailey did on NXT, um, for sure. Oh, I, I, I both... absolutely one hundred percent agree. Uh, yeah, they both look excellent. Charlotte as well. I pulled out all the stops. Um, it was it just showcased what the women can actually do. Yeah, like they don't need to have three minute matches on Raw. Mm-hmm. They can they can hang with the men and have twenty minute epics for sure. uh, like this. Well, I mean, this went this must have gone near twenty minutes. I think so. It's it just told it was a, a story of near falls. Of you know submissions being dragged into the ropes. Uh, mm-hmm. D- Dana got banished from ringside at one point that for was awesome, interfering yeah. in the match when Sasha used an Eddie Guerrero spot. Yeah, she threw the women's title to Dana. Dana caught it. Ref caught her. So cool. Love throwing that. out of ringside. Superb. And to make it even sweeter, Sasha Banks is your new women's champion, and I was so happy. I was so happy. Yeah, so good. She deserves it absolutely. Uh, I love the ending as well, where Charlotte's like, "You'll never ever beat me." And then see, like, reverses Charlotte into, like, the bank statement. Yeah. Uh, so good. I've seen people sort of saying, do we think Sasha's won it too soon? Should they have saved it for SummerSlam? No, I disagree. Because no. there'll be a rematch. 
Yeah, which sure. will be at SummerSlam. Most likely. And then Sasha can move forward, um, which Sasha will win, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And then Sasha can move forward as a women's champion from there. Mm-hmm. So no, I don't think, um, because if you drag it out to SummerSlam, um, that means this whole feud is going to get dragged out even longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. But uh, no, excellent match. Uh, the only <laughs> one part where Sasha dived to the outside, had him right in the face. Um, right in the face. It's, it's so bad. Such a bad landing. Um, poor Shasha. Thankfully, she was okay. It looked like they'd snapped her neck. It wasn't careful. Yeah, it was just an, inc- it's just an unbelievable <laughs> face plant. <laughs> yeah. She caught Charlotte as well, so luckily it looked fine. Yeah, yeah. But it just looked... I mean, the whole crowd saw it. And yeah, like, it's like, ooh. I looked away. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, she was okay. Phenomenal match. So good. And also, I did an awesome looking uh, moonsault off the top rope onto the outside. Yeah. It's amazing. And before that, she did a uh, like a backflip from the top rope. She she got some serious air and landed on her feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It's like, Jesus. Crazy. Um, but excellent match. Great showcase for women's wrestling. Great Dude, outcome. Yeah. Very happy that Sasha won. Yes. It was an adorable video online on WWE.com with uh, when uh, Shasta like, FaceTime with Bailey on the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Yeah. So cool. Um, next up, another squash match. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With the- Braun Strowman squashes James Ellsworth. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what I took from this was that James Ellsworth had a strange chin. <laughs> yeah. And also an offspring tattoo. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Um, but yeah, what happened to his, what? What happened to Braun's hair? More importantly, I know. He's like, <laughs> what now he's on Raw. He's like, he's got new hair. Yeah. Well, so how this? How is his ponytail so long? His hair wasn't that long. What? How long before he's called Strowman? Just Strowman. <laughs> yeah. What was Braun? Good question. Not long. Not long. They can't just call him Braun. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Ah, oh, here comes Strowman. You can just imagine it. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Drop the Braun. Strowman on his own. Makes sense. Um. Yeah, it was a squash match. It is what it is. Yeah. So what is the reverse joke slam? <laughs> I think no it looks super weird um, how do you took someone from behind with one hand hmm. he's a big dude though and that guy was little yeah I guess well so if you took them slamming someone on the front so they just put their arms out and stop themselves and be like I'm fine <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know sense. Um, but yeah it was, it was a yeah, squash match what can you do yeah that's what it is um, it was a very wrestling heavy show which is great yeah it's very good more please um, yeah. just wrestling not nonsense mm-hmm Enzo Amore and Big Cass taking on the Shining Stars. Uh, yeah. More fantastic mic work from Enzo. Mm-hmm. Um, Shining Stars came down, interrupted, um, talking about Puerto Rico and the rest of it. Um, Enzo and Cass won. Good match. It was all right, yeah. Um, um, but, it, you know, it is what it is. Enzo and Cass need something to do. Yeah. It was R-Truth and Goldus came out halfway through. Uh, Goldus playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. Into the ring. Uh, why is Goldus through still a thing? Um, Goldust is funny I will give him that I like Goldust is, Gold is great uh, R-Truth not so much um, but yeah Shining Stars are for bad for because they got no reaction at all mm. nobody gives a shit about them <laughs> no um, yeah shame it was, but yeah it was decent yeah, yeah it was fine Enzo and Cass won as they always do yeah, um, the, WWE need to figure out a direction for Enzo and Cass because you know Cena's on Smackdown now so that very short storyline is now finished mm-hmm. so now they need something else to do yeah. Um, earlier on in the show, um, New Day cut a promo. Oh, yeah. Um, a very funny promo. As they, they're, they're just excellent, as they always are. It was all right. It and, was um, what? Huh? Went on a bit long, but it was okay. Yeah, it was fine. Um, they were interrupted by the club. Yep. And uh, it looks like it's going to be the club versus the New Day going forward in a tag team championship program. Makes sense. Which I think finally the New Day will lose those titles at SummerSlam to the club. Yes. If only the club had a third person. Mm. Mm. Mystery. Didn't even mention it on Raw, did they? <laughs> nope. Not even a backstage crossover. Yeah. Very surprising. I think it's I think it's coming now. You think? Happen. I think so. But that means they're gonna have to turn Finn heel and I don't think they will. I think they will. Mm. I think they will. I think so. I don't think there's too much money in Finn Balor for them to turn him heel. It's true, but T shirts, all the rest of it. I mean I know the club are gonna be super popular. Yeah. I want the T shirt already, but <laughs> yeah, me too. um I just can't see them flicking the switch and turning Finn Balor heel. No yeah, way. Yeah, it's, it's He's going to be the face going forward. I'm certain of it. Mm, I don't know. It's just, uh, it'd be so good though to have the club on on war. Mm, I don't I'm not going to make a side bet. I'm going to make a side bet. I'm going to say that it, they are they do get together and Finn turns heel. Okay. I'm going to say he's not. Okay. I'll add that to the. This is the, we'll add there. this to our ever growing list of uh, bets and you know. Best what stuff. we've got for the rest of the year. Yeah. Oh, speaking of. Uh, Predictions. Yeah, speaking of, I lost one. Um, 
So you predicted that there'll be two champions, um, one for War, one for SmackDown. I predicted there wouldn't be, and that it's flat like have the the champion like float between both shows. I was wrong. Uh, Tony was right. Tony gets back his point, which he lost. Yes. Uh-huh. So it's Tony on six points and me with four points. Damn, I was so close to catching up. I'm pulling away again. You are. Next up, it was the main event of the evening. Mm-hmm. Finn Balor taking on Roman Reigns for the chance to face Seth Rollins for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. Oh uh, yeah, excellent match. I thought. Really good match. Really, really good. Finn looked excellent. Roman looked good. Uh, yeah, it's all, all good, all round. You know, no it, just, it just <laughs> topped off a fantastic episode of Raw. It really did, yeah. And I come on this podcast nearly every week saying how crap I thought Raw was. But this <laughs> yeah. week it was truly excellent. It really, really was. Yeah. Um, Finn went over clean. Yes, right With choice. the coup de gras on Roman Reigns. And I was like, when he won, I was like, oh, that's why Roman won the fight all way. <laughs> it, makes, it makes Finn look really good if he beats yeah. uh, Roman clean. And uh, I thought it was excellent. I, th- I think it um, wrestling has evolved. And it's changed over the years so much. Okay, yeah, and definitely. Finn winning and going on to face Ro- um, Seth Rollins at SummerSlam shows where we're at with wrestling at the minute. Yeah. I mean, I've seen Vince Russo um, ranting and raving this week about how Finn Balor winning is stupid and blah, 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 That's and all this sort of stuff. You killed but WTW, shut up. Vince Russo <laughs> is stuck in the body slams and body oil era of wrestling. That's <laughs> yeah, what he seriously. wants. He would want somebody like Braun Strowman to be the WWE champion because that's what he thinks wrestling is still. Yeah, he's but, stuck in the past. But like everything, it, it's evolved. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, we're at a point now where guys who weigh just over 200 pounds can be the top guy. Yeah. We're at a point where people who are shaped like Kevin Owens can still be a phenomenal athlete yeah. and be a top guy. Definitely. Not everybody is Hulk Hogan. We've left that era well behind. Yes, really. So we are now at a point where the likes of Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, those guys can be top stars and it can be believable. Yep. Dean Ambrose isn't the biggest guy. No, he's I not. I mean, he was weighed just over 200 pounds. Yeah, probably. He's not much bigger than Finn Balor. Yeah. Not much bigger than Seth Rollins. Yeah. If he even is bigger. Yeah, but it looks like smaller. So Finn That's Balor that. went over clean... And it just tops off a fantastic episode of Raw. Yep. Agreed. The new era is well and truly underway, and I'm very excited for what's going to happen going forward. Me too. Very excited. I'm excited to see Finn Balor and Seth Rollins sort of face off next week on Raw. Mm-hmm. Me sort too. Of, you know, so to build that feud going into SummerSlam, which is only three weeks away. Yeah. That's going to be a great match as well. Oh, yeah. Can't wait be, for that. It's I think it's going to be absolutely outstanding. It's yeah. one of those matches where you just think, this is why I want these guys on the main roster from... Yeah. Like from NXT, so that we can have these matches. Yeah, so good. These are dream matches. 100%, yeah. Like Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior back in the day, that's a dream match. Yeah, yeah. But now it's Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. Exactly, yeah. It's evolved. It's a great yeah. episode of Raw. Fantastic way to start the new era. Yes. Exactly. Then we move on to SmackDown. Yes, on SmackDown. Uh, SmackDown, not quite as good, I thought. I, I agree. I don't think it was as good as Raw. Yeah. But... um. I don't think they've sort of worked out yet how to work the two hours. Oh, uh, yeah. I think you're right. Because Raw was perfect this week for the first time in a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was okay. It's a, it's a good starting block. It was okay. They It started near enough the same way that Raw did, with the but the roster was in the ring. Oh, yeah. Shane and Daniel Bryan came down and said... Dean Ambrose won, the, the title's on SmackDown, but who's going to face Dean Ambrose for the championship at SummerSlam? So they're running with the same formula that they did with Raw. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, they, you know, And this episode of SmackDown was centred around who was going to face Dean mm-hmm. at SummerSlam. And next week, I think they'll start to build new rivalries and new feuds and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the way this was going to be determined is that um, they were going to have a six-pack challenge, which we haven't seen for a while. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Um, so they picked five guys, uh, and the five guys were... Let me just... Uh, la, 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 la. They were... Oh, God almighty. Dolph Ziggler. Yep. Bray Wyatt. Yep. Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. AJ Styles. Yep. And the face that runs the place, <laughs> which I don't like... Yeah. 
John Cena. John Cena. Um, so that's five. Yep. And they needed a sixth person. So they're going to have a battle royal with not all of the remaining people around the side of the ring. Yeah, most. Like, a, like <laughs> the ring looked really empty when the battle royal started, I yeah, thought. Weird. So the rest of the guys um, were going to compete for that six spot in the six-pack challenge. Mm-hmm. It was sense. a fine battle royal. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was fine. Um, I tell you what, it, it made Kane look very strong. Yep. He's always excellent yep. in these matches. And is, yeah. I think with this new era and the reset... You can really build Kane up again. I think so. Because he's looked stupid in that sort of corporate role that he was in. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And I think if you they ignore that and with this reset, they can make Kane look strong again. Yeah. And I like the idea of that. Yeah, sure. Um, but it was it was fine. There was some uh, Mojo looked good. Um, both him and Zach were hype bro geared up. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but it was fine. Um, JBL called Kalisto Sinkara at did, one yeah. point. Thanks for that, JBL. Yep, really good. Really good commentary, JBL. I'm so glad that you're on SmackDown. Yeah, really, so really great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I'd rather the more. King be in there. I have to be honest. I'd rather yeah, yeah, the King be too. in there than JBL. I agree, 100%. Um, I, I don't think they've got the commentary team right either, but I'll touch on that in a little while. Yeah, it's not great. Um, but <laughs> um, last week we sort of uh, talked about how disappointed we were that uh, Apollo Crews... Uh, was you know just in the supplementary draft yeah. after the actual draft, and I think WWE have probably read those reactions on the internet from various from a lot of people. I think a lot yeah, of people yeah. shared our view, and um, he won, yeah, he which did. is great, great to see. Yeah, really good, really awesome. Yeah, um, very pleased. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, and I hope this is a thing going forward. Because it, I thought it was really cool to see the likes of Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews being showcased in that way. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously Raw's got the big stars. I mean, yeah. I know Cena and AJ Styles are on there, but, you know, it's well, good to yeah. see these. You need to build new stuff. Um, next up, they add a vignette for Shelton Benjamin's return. I have the SmackDown results uh, yeah. now. Oh, okay, cool. um, Shelton Benjamin's coming back. Yeah. I yeah. didn't even know. No, I didn't. That's awesome. Um, this is great. I love Shelton Benjamin. Hey, don't stop me. No. I love it. Good, good impression of his entrance theme. Thank you. It was Ain't really no good. Stop me. No, stop me. No, yeah, it was really good. Good. Yeah, we love that. Solid. This- <laughs> Thank you. It's like Benjamin's always that guy who's like, should have been in the main event, but never got the opportunity. He was always super talented. He could and, be uh, a massive player on SmackDown. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I mean, I've not seen him recently. I'm assuming he's still in impeccable shape. I'm sure he is, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he was awesome. Bring Charlie Haas back. Let's have the world's greatest tag team versus American Alpha. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, let's do it. But <laughs> I, 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 I like Shelton Benjamin. I think he can be excellent. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, match wise, they tell you what they did. Um, I won't sort of. I'm not going to run down SmackDown um, in the order it was in. We'll just talk about it. Yeah, sure. So nice. they they were throughout the night. They aired promos or interviews, black backgrounds, the entrance music of the superstar in question playing in the background quietly. And then sort of cutting a promo to the camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I liked. And this yeah, week they did sort of every competitor in the six-pack challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked it. What did you think? Yeah, it was all right. Um, it's kind of like, I think they used to do that back in the old day. Um, it's oh, very old school, yeah. It's very old school. Um, but yeah, I like it. Vince Russo would love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, it gives, it gives like people, um, the guys who like cut a promo and it's like make them sound, make themselves sound good. And yeah, it does. Yeah, it, bu- it, it, it builds himself up. I I don't think it does any harm at all. No, no. And it beats, I guess at this time, <laughs> so-and-so, so-and-so. So, 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 so. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to punch it in the face yeah. hard and win the match. Yeah. Because you don't need to do that. And I think that's a good way. They've changed the style that the of the of the broadcasts. Uh, another thing I didn't touch on, uh, and it happened on both Raw and SmackDown, new camera angles oh, yeah. during the matches. Um, I didn't notice like, the floating camera. Um, wasn't a big fan of the floating camera, honestly. Um Looks, it looks a bit weird. I like it. It gives yeah. it a more sports style presentation. Yeah, it I gives guess. it a combat sports feel, like UFC. Yeah. So it, it was like the camera angle off the the game off WWE 2K16. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. So like they're facing the crowd, so they're facing the hard camera, but it was sort of floating, and it was yeah, it was so good. It was alright. Yeah, I'm trying to get used to it. It's just yeah, it's different. <laughs> it is. I don't like change. <laughs> you have to get used to change. Yeah. It's a new era now. <laughs> um, Becky Lynch versus Natalia was next up. Yeah. So a rematch from Battleground, con- the continuation of a rivalry that no one's enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a better match than the one at Battleground. Yeah. But it still wasn't that great. It was okay. I mean, Becky won this time. Yeah, with the armbar. Um, 
They disarm her. Disarm her, yeah. Don't mm-hmm. like it. That's crap. <laughs> but it was an okay it. match. I'm not really... I'm not really... Again, like we, like we touched on before, that chemistry just isn't there with the two of them. It's not, yeah. I, I hope this is done post... I, I'm, I hope this is done now. It's not. <laughs> I think it was very After the more. match, yeah. while Renee Young was interviewing Becky, mm-hmm. um, it was like a... a you know, an exodus from the from the backstage. Oh, right. So Alexa Bliss came out, cut uh, a promo, looked you know looked looked look the part, looked yeah, great. Um, I haven't, I haven't talked about that. Yeah. Um, and she Indeed. did she did a little bit of a uh, little bit of promo. Yeah. Then Naomi returned. I'm a mayor, yeah, yeah, yeah. To it? no reaction I'm, I'm at all. A, a yeah. It's like people didn't even know that she was out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you 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 were gone, weren't you? You were a thing once. <laughs> I was like, oh, Naomi's back. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, fine. It's fine. I, I like Naomi. Yeah. Good athlete. Yeah. Good women's wrestler. Very underrated, I think. Yeah, I agree. Terrible music. I can't work out if she's a face or a heel now. I think she's yeah, a face. Yeah, I think so. I sure. think she's turned face. Why not? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, then Carmella came out. Oh, yeah. Good. Good to see you on the um, show. Yeah, got a nice little reaction. Yeah. I don't think people um, are used to her shtick. Yeah, probably not. Uh, sort of, my name is Carmella, that sort of thing. I don't think people are used to that. Um, yeah, like they sure. have taken to Enzo and Cass. It, it will come in time. I like Carmella. Yeah. Um, she's it's lovely. It's she does the moonwalk and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I've got a lot of time for this. Is What this segment was, was introducing the new divas, the divas, divas. the new women of SmackDown to the new crowd. Yeah. The problem I have with that is that what are they fighting for? <laughs> the women's that's, championship is on war. See, that's the problem. So what, <laughs> yeah. They need a new championship for the women. <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't be, but... Do you think that'll happen? I don't know. Well, it needs... Well, there has to be, really, isn't there? Because otherwise, what's the point? Just why they're, they're fighting there. for nothing. You're right. You're, <laughs> right. You're absolutely yeah. right. They're fighting for nothing. Um, and then, I don't know what this was. Uh, oh, Eve Marie. <laughs> it was garbage as well. Yeah. The Eve Marie came out to her normal music, but it had, like, some man talking over the top. <laughs> Yeah. Like announcing her and bigging her up, and I just couldn't I, I understand know. it. I, yeah, I didn't get it at first, but I, I think it's because I don't know. People perceive her as this like person to relieve really in our faces. Like, look how good she is; she's so pretty and stuff. But you can't wrestle, and people hate her because of that. Um, so, so you think they're playing on it? I think playing on it. Yeah, exactly. So that they're bigging her up as much as possible because that's what they hated. So if that's what they hate, and just give them more of that, make it get more booze, make it be a top hit, top heel. Which I'm sure she can be. She needs to learn how to wrestle a bit. <laughs> okay. She looked fantastic. Yeah, she, great, she always yeah. does. Yeah. Um, so this, that was weird. Um, she ended that segment. So she, the, her entrance ended that segment. She's going to be the top heel diva on SmackDown. Diva. Uh, yeah, probably. Woman. Woman. <laughs> Need to stop saying divas because I'm so it's used hard. to it. <laughs> I know, yeah. Because we, we, we've had the term diva now for ages. Yeah. Diva. So... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know where this is going. I do think they need a women's championship to fight for if Charlotte's going to be exclusive to Raw with her championship with no sign of her floating over to SmackDown. Sasha. And yes, I agree. Sorry, <laughs> Sasha Banks is the new champion. I can't get used to that either because Charlotte's <laughs> had it for so long. Yeah. Um, the women's champion seemingly isn't going to float over to SmackDown. Didn't seem like it, no. So they need a championship to fight for. For sure. I think this was really just an introductory episode of SmackDown to the new era. I think so. I think we, we'll we'll start to know more next week. I think it felt worse in comparison to War because War was so good. Yeah, uh, it, there's no way it could have, could have lived could have lived up. Jesus Christ, there's no way it could have lifted up. I'm not even try. Stop stop talking. Ben. It couldn't get to that level. <laughs> yeah, there's no way it could have lived up to that War. expectation. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I agree. Um, I got it out. I did it. <laughs> uh, the next up was Miss TV. This is the sort of nonsense that I want. To avoid with this new era, yeah, you don't need the chat sh- chat show segments anymore. I just feel like we're past it. Nobody cares for them. It doesn't really make a difference whether they're there or not. I don't care for Miss TV. I just want to see wrestling. Yeah, same here. So for the second night, well, for the second time in a row, Randy Orton was a guest on a chat show. This time, Miss TV mm-hmm. came out, same sort of thing. He said this time they had a match. Yep, Manny came out in his pants, so it made sense. Yeah, <laughs> classic Randy Orton comes out yeah. in his pants, not announced to wrestle. Yeah. Miz was in his wrestling gear as well as he always is. Yeah, um, it was... cr- crap. Miz TV segment didn't enjoy it. Yeah, crap match as well. Crap match. Uh, Randy Orton won. Yeah, Randy fell out the ring at one point. Is it quite funny? 
Yeah. Um, and by the shoulder, which is just, we just uh, had repaired. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Miz was on all f- offense. Well, Miz had all the offense in this match. Uh, Miz only hit like two RKOs and that was it. Yeah. Match over. Thanks, Randy. Cheers. What they're trying to do here, and I understand why they're doing it, they didn't have to do it to the Miz. They could have put Randy Orton in a squash match. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they really didn't need to do it to the Miz because, again, this is the thing. The IC yeah. title, and this is why I think this is just an introductory episode of SmackDown because... They need to make Randy Orton look good to make it look believable that he could realistically beat Brock Lesnar. And the yeah. one RK, they keep saying this as well, that one I, one RKO is all it's going to take. Mm. Um, I know we hit him with two, but they need to make the, the RKO look really strong. Yeah. So they need Randy Orton to win matches convincingly. Yeah. So he's knocked off the IC champion convincingly. Um, and I'm sure he'll do the same to someone else next week. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Um, with The Miz... Uh, obviously, he's just defended his IC Championship at um, Battleground. Mm-hmm. And again, I know I keep saying it and I keep harping on about it, but I think next week we'll start to figure out where SmackDown is going. Rivalries will start to be built um, and all that sort of th- and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. This week was solely focused on who was going to fight Dean Ambrose at SummerSlam for the championship because mm-hmm. they kept showing the, the backstage interviews all night and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't much wrestling on the show, really. Oh, yeah, no, he's about. Um, I look forward to seeing Randy Orton versus F5 into an RKO. We do know it's going to happen. Yep. <laughs> and you get a two count. American Alpha were hyped for next week. Oh, yeah. The show the video pack is showing them. Good. They could have had that match instead of Randy Orton. Yeah, they could have. Well, to be honest, they could have had Randy Orton's match and they could yeah. have had American Alpha fighting. Yeah, it's that's true. fine. Just, it's Miss TV. Yeah. Um, there was a there was a, a local talent in the ring, ready to, ready for a squash oh, yeah. match of some kind. Yeah, yeah. And then the one man rock band, Heath Slater, came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. We knew this was we knew Heath Slater would turn up at some point. Yeah. As because he wasn't drafted, uh, he cut a promo. Shane Matt came out. Then Rhino came out. Yeah. And Heath Slater actually did a really good job of make, picking himself up and sounding good. I thought maybe they might be giving them a push. Hopefully they are. But uh, but yeah, Rhino came out of nowhere and give give him big. Big old gore for the trouble. Here's a prediction. Okay. Next week on SmackDown, mm-hmm. Rhino versus Heath Slater. Okay. Um, they'll give him the ultimatum of, Heath, if you win, yeah. then you can have your job on SmackDown, but you've got to beat Rhino. Yeah, that makes sense. Won't happen. He'll, Rhino will beat him. Yeah. Very quickly. And then maybe the week after, I'll have him against someone else, and then I'll be after that someone else. Until, until eventually he wins something. Until eventually he does win. Yeah, yeah. Um, One turn of face in the process. Yeah, fine. The crowd were into it. Yeah, crowd liked him. Hire Heath or sign sign Heath, sign Heath Slater or whatever like the chat was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fine. Uh, good to see Rhino. Obviously, they're trying to fill the SmackDown roster out because Raw has more people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's good. It's all good. Again, we don't know what's going to happen at the minute. So we're talking about SmackDown and it might seem a bit fumbled and but we it, it was sort of how the show was, really. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Like, we didn't really... It, we didn't... The only thing we found out was who was going to fight Dean Ambrose at... Um, SummerSlam. Yes. Really. Um, so that takes us to the six pack challenge. Mm. It was good. It was, it was a fine match. Very good, yeah. Um, I think the crowd was confused as everyone else as to what SmackDown really was this week. Yeah. Because it, at the minute, it doesn't have its own identity. Yeah, not really. Um, it come, you know, it's coming off the back of a fantastic episode of Raw. So we had a lot to live up to. Mm -hmm. And, it didn't advance. The only storyline it advanced was again was the number one contender. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was a fine match. Um, Cena at one point uh, gave the <laughs> AA to everybody. Yeah, this gave everyone just knock him out because it's John Cena is impervious to pain apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was okay. Um, it went just shy of twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, Dolph Ziggler surprisingly won. Yeah, Dolph Ziggler out of nowhere with super kick. It's Ray J Styles. What? <laughs> yeah, <How'd> that happened. <laughs> but again, this is part of this whole reset thing, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. I like Dolph Ziggler. I think he, you know, has been deserving of a championship. You know, being in the main event picture for a long time, but never really got. He's been doing nothing. Like Sheamus, yeah. he's been doing nothing. In fact, was he in a feud with Sheamus? No, who was he no, in a feud with? Feud with uh, Baron Corbin. Like, yeah, that was like, it. Oh, of weeks. course, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. It was it, it was refreshing to see. Yeah, it was someone new in the main they event. Could have easily had seen a win. Yeah, completely. I was, I was expecting him to win. To win, I, I was expecting AJ to win. I have to be honest. Yeah, that'd be good so thing. when when Ziggler won, I was shocked. Hmm. But again, you know, like Sheamus, like Kane, you can reinvigorate 
people like Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Okay. And Dolph Ziggler is going to fight Dean Ambrose at SummerSlam. Yeah. That's Fine. Right. That's really a good match. Now. That's all we lose. <laughs> next week, we can start to see where SmackDown's going. Mm, I think so. Because you won't have that stuff at the beginning with, you know, um, figuring out who the number one contender is going to be and building up the six-pack challenge all night. Mm-hmm. You can f- start to see where people are going. So what's next for Cena? What's next for AJ Styles? Um, you know, who's going to be fighting for the IC Championship? Who's, what's going to happen with the women's division? Yeah, yeah. The, all these questions are going to start to be answered next week in the build-up to SummerSlam. Yeah, I think so. How did you feel about SmackDown in general this week? Um, yeah, as you said, as we said, it wasn't as good as War, but really it couldn't, couldn't have been. There's no way it could have been. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think he just needs to find his own ident- identity. And I think it will, eventually. Just need to give it a chance. I look forward to seeing Southern Benjamin next week. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more returning stars, as has been rumoured. I don't think he's next week. He's not next week? He just said coming soon. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Well, coming soon. Whenever he comes here, I'm sure it'll be great. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing more. Look forward to, I'm, I'm excited. It's basically what. Uh, I, I'm excited. All that. Um, it, it can only get better. Yeah. And I think it will when it finds the right formula and of how to fill the two hours properly mm-hmm. um, and how the different superstars are going to do different things. I think th- then it'll start getting good, but I'm excited. It's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a nice change of pace from raw. Yeah, I think so. They, so, should, they need to make themselves different because although raw felt completely different in like the presentation, and everything SmackDown felt pretty much the same as it always did. Yeah, it did. Um, so they need to find their own identity like, like war has. And I think it will, eventually, hopefully. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to judge SmackDown, the new era of SmackDown, based on this one episode. Yeah. Because it was very clear what this one episode was about. Yeah. Um, because SmackDown hasn't been live in years. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Or ever, actually. Has it ever been live? I don't think so. Any, like, like, they have the occasional have... one. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what happens going forward. Me too. And we'll we'll, we'll continue to cover SmackDown. You know, as it progresses. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So, I'm excited. Yeah. Good start to the new era, I think. Very good. Um, yeah. Raw was fantastic. SmackDown was decent. Not great. But, overall, it gives us an idea as to where WWE is going and what they want to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's off to a good start. A promising start. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we have that sense of hope. Yeah, that um, that could very quickly be snatched away from us, of course. But I think we have that sense of hope now that they're going to get it right. Yeah, because we've been saying since we started the podcast that something big needs to change, something needs to happen, and it finally looks like it's happening. It's we're in the middle of it now. I mean, even last week we were sort of unsure because we weren't that keen on the draft episode of SmackDown. Yeah, we were like, okay, this is fine, but it's delivered. Yeah, so far so good. The complete reset after Battleground, and now we can move forward and start to see how things go, building towards SummerSlam and beyond. Yeah. So the uh, also what has also been confirmed is SmackDown only pay per views. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Starting with Backlash on September the eleventh. Okay. Cool. Uh, which is only a couple of weeks after SummerSlam, mm-hmm. but um, that's fine. Uh, um, SmackDown needs needs this. Yeah, for sure. Um, to, to to build itself as a brand and establish its own identity uh, and I'm fine with it mm-hmm. yeah, um, we we'll see how it pans out in the long run but for now I'm fine with it um, I don't think the commentary team for Smackdown has the right balance yeah it's too much JBL not enough Minello too much JBL <laughs> um, I'd have been happy with just uh, Mauro Ronaldo and David Otunga yeah, same. Because David Otunga can learn a lot from Moro. Yeah. I think JBL was just trying to talk over the top and then it just it just got too confusing and too much. Yeah. Raw had a perfect balance. I thought Corey Graves was excellent, fitting oh, yeah. perfectly with Saxton, who has come a long way. Yep, yep. And Michael Cole. Yeah, that was really good. I like Raw's So SmackDown just needs to figure it out. Yeah. And it will. It it it, it will. It just will. It'll all come JBL. together. Yeah. Um, um David Otunga was fine. It's kinda of boring, but I'm sure he'll... But he's new. He's, he's new yeah, to it. New. I mean, this is the first time I'd heard Otunga on commentary because I don't watch main event or superstars or any of that crap. Yeah. Um, they're nothing shows to me. No one leaves you. Um, so I, th- I think Otunga can be fine. He's got the... He's got he's got a good charisma. He just needs to grow into his role and he will. 
Yeah. Um, JBL just needs to tone it down and leave the colour commentary to the play-by-play to Mauro Ronaldo yeah. and JBL can be comment relief or whatever the hell he <laughs> chucks in sports facts and crap that oh, it's yeah. just cringeworthy and it's terrible. Um, but overall, good start. Very promising. And I'm excited to see what happens next week, I which uh, I haven't been able to say for a while. Yeah. So this build to SummerSlam is going to be good. I've just got a good feeling. I do. Brock Lesnar is going to be on Raw next week. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, they announced it. Um, did they announce it on Raw or SmackDown? I can't remember. Can't remember. Either way, they, they promoted it, I think, possibly on Raw. I can't remember, though. Of course, they would have announced it on Raw. Why would they announce it on SmackDown? Yeah, yeah. That's true. So, yeah, Brock's going to be live on Raw. Great. I'm sure uh, he'll uh, F5 someone. <laughs> sure. Interesting note, though. Um, I read that Paul Heyman hadn't renewed his contract with WWE oh. re- uh, yet. Interesting. He Rock Lesnar needs a mouthpiece because he yeah. isn't very good at talking himself. Yep. So he's either going to come down and just destroy someone without talking, or Paul Heyman's going to be there. Yeah, he needs to be there. <laughs> I guess the latter. Yeah, we'll see. I hope so. Long podcast this week. Mm. We've talked. We've we've covered all bases. We've covered world news. <laughs> yeah. We've covered video games. And we've covered a ton of wrestling. So much wrestling. This has been episode 23 of the Sunny and Finn Show. Mm-hmm. Please do subscribe to the podcast. You can find us on all podcast services, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and anything else that you may use. Yep, yep. If you don't use those three conventional ones. Yep, definitive ref behind us. Yeah, sure. Um, you found us, obviously, we didn't suggest. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, we're on YouTube as well. Yep. At Sunny and Finn Play. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can... Find the podcast on there. Finn can be bothered to upload it. Yeah, every now and again. <laughs> We've got some new videos coming up soon of us playing uh, old wrestling games. Okay. So go check those out. Go check out our previous streams, including the Battleground one from nearly said Battlefield. Almost. The Battleground one from this past Sunday and the other pay per views before. Yep. And loads of other videos as well. Loads of fun stuff there now. Loads of fun stuff coming. Loads of content. We're all about content. We love content. We do. But for now, this has been episode 23. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we'll speak to you next week. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.